This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. Which gets us very nicely to our, our oh, next topic here of great real-time hybrid simulation. This is a, like one of the first times <laughs> that we've done this at OSU. That's mostly been a Lehigh thing or, or other uh, universities thing. Um, but you did a real-time hybrid simulation right back here. Well, um, I actually did it in the, 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 in the, other the one. flume. I did it in the, the other one, the other but side. we're going to do it here. We're going to do, gonna it, do here. it here. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to walk across the hall as cool as yeah. that would be, but yeah. over there behind the wall, we've got a hundred meter long wave flume. That's amazing. Um, so can you talk about, um, what real time hybrid simulation is for people who don't know what it is and why is that important, especially with, what we just talked about, that fluid structure interaction, that you know, structure soil interaction. There's a lot of reasons that is super important. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so you know, traditionally we kind of divide ourselves up into two camps. We're all there, like the numerical person or we're the experimentalist. And so hybrid simulation tries to take the advantages of both. So if there's something that you understand enough to model it well, that can be housed in a numerical model. And But if there's a portion of it maybe you don't really understand that well, then that can be physical. And so the entire idea of hybrid simulation is it hybridizes a physical and numerical sort of subsystem or subassembly, sometimes also called a substructure, and then combined it represents the complete system. Um, so you take a complete system, partition it, into let's say two parts, uh, a numerical part and a physical part. And then those things interact between for, with sensors and actuators. Um, and then the governing equations of motion or governing equations in general are then applied to that whole system. Um, so in the case of fluid structure interaction, or at least with the, the few applications that I've looked at, um, we were looking at, uh, say, modeling a, a monopile offshore wind turbine. Um, and so we had a, a, a physical cylinder um, that was in our, our large wave flume. And then we were numerically representing um, the soil at the base. Yeah. Uh, so that was numerical. Um, because you can't get grains of sand small well, enough you, in scale to what you, you got. You could, up. you could, but that brings Practically. up- Practically. Yeah, well, well so, 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 that's actually a very good point. But so we have the soil that was numerical, but we also had the wind that was numerical. And this oh, yeah. is where the sort of scaling laws that you're bringing up are, are very important. And so if you have wind in the same setting as, uh, say, waves, um, the, the, the typical similitude laws are really incompatible with one another. So with wind, typically you're using Reynolds scaling. Um, and then with the, the waves um, or open channel flow, you're typically using fruit scaling. Oh. And so when you scale those things, two things together, they don't quite match. Like you're scaling different portions of the governing equation. Um, and so with hybrid simulation, you can imagine like the numerical model is at full scale and it's scaling up and down to sort of communicate with your physical model. And then you get around some of these similitude requirements. So basically kind of for people who aren't familiar with Reynolds and Freud and all that, it's like you have these two different kinds of equations that have different variables in them that some of them don't work at a smaller scale in the same way that the others do. So if you want, say, a 10th scale model of a wind turbine, you scale down the wind to 10th scale, it doesn't work the same way that waves do at 10th scale. Yes, yes, yeah. So basically some of the forces equal zero or equals mass times acceleration. So like some sort of variation on Newton's second law. And so that some of the forces could be a whole bunch of different forces. So it could be the hydrodynamic forces plus the aerodynamic forces plus but the wind turbine doesn't care. It's just whatever same force. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and so um, but those two forces will tend to scale differently as you go down from full scale to small scale. Um, and so we were using hybrid simulation as a way of mitigating that. And and this isn't really a, a new idea. Um, so Norway has looked at a lot of hybrid simulation um, for for floating offshore wind turbines. Um, uh, the idea of applying real-time hybrid simulation in this fluid structure interaction setting was actually a, 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 an unfunded NSF proposal between like me and Jim Rickles at Lehigh and Dennis Israti at, at uh, University of Nevada, Reno. So this is like, I'm not the only person sure, yeah. that was thinking about this. Um, this just ended, I ended up being the person who happened to be here at OSU yeah. who managed to get it into the flow. Yeah, which I mean, 
all of that shows that the power of, of being part of a network uh, like Neri, where I mean, Jim Rickles is at Lehigh. Yes. You know, like guys can collaborate really closely and share your data on Design Safe super easily. So he's more than happy for you to get this award and use your data and yeah. help you get it the best you can because it benefits him as well. And being part of the same, all the same network, we're all rolling the same boat in the same direction. Yes, exactly, exactly. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Design Safe Radio. This show is sponsored by the National Science Foundation, grant number 2129782. You can subscribe to Design Safe Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please leave us a review so that we can improve the show and also help others find our episodes in iTunes. Thanks for your feedback and support. We really appreciate it. You can find out more about Nary at designsafe-ci.org, on Facebook at Design Safe Radio, or on Twitter at Nary Design Safe. <laughs>